how's it going and welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be showing you a cheeky little trick to create really realistic to create realistic fire and smoke simulations in Blender without having to use for example uh, open VDB volumes or simulating fire within Blender and its particle systems or going into geometry nodes none of that just fully realistic already pre-rendered fire and smoke now yes it's a little bit of a cheat because it's not being done within blender but it's a really great way to save time on the compositing option now the trick here is to already have a pre-rendered dust or fire explosion whatever you want to use you can get these from websites such as trying digital or action vfx any of those places some of them do it for free as well get an explosion have that as a raw video file so if we go to add image images as plain and I'm going to go into my action VFX folder I've got here. Pick out an explosion that I've already got. And these are like $10, $15. So if you want to just drop a couple of bucks, a couple of pounds, a couple of euros, whatever currency you use on it, um, I think it's well worth it. And you can also use them in different ways. So we're going to select that. Make sure use alpha is selected and straight or pre multiplied. I don't really know what difference that makes, but um, either one is fine. We're going to select that. Add that in, go into material preview or rendered and boom, there you go. You've got your realistic looking fire or smoke, as I guess say, simulation within Blender. If we go into the material nodes and look, you'll see that everything's already set up and it's using the alpha channel from the video file, plugging that into the alpha and the color is going into the base color. So that's already all set up for you. And if we just turn the specular down, which is pretty important because otherwise the light bounces in a weird way, you don't want to have that. So bring the specular down and there you go. You've got your fire and smoke. Now this file is huge. I think it's like four gigabytes. So it might be a little bit slow. And if you add loads in and you've got sort of like 20 gigabytes worth of video file playing, it can be a bit slow. So just be aware of that. What you can also do is you can actually edit the plane that it's on. So if you had a loop cut in, you can actually crop uh, the file as well if you want to get rid of anything you don't want from the explosion and this is great because you can move the camera around you can move the texture image plane wherever you want in the scene behind objects in front of objects they can move around obviously stick and parent to stuff without having to just imagine where it's going to be we can switch this out for an explosion and just make sure that the frames are set to be enough to cover the amount of uh, the video if we press play here you can see we can also change the offset as well so it starts at different times. So if you want to have the explosions coming in, uh, you know, 20 seconds later, then you can do that. They don't all have to start at frame one. Some limitations are you can't rotate the plane because then you start to see that it's just a flat image. But you can see if we move the camera through the scene here, uh, it obviously parents really well to wherever it is. It's static within the scene where it, where it would be, which is obviously great. Now, what if your video file doesn't have an alpha channel? What if it's a video file with a black background which some stock images do if we go and click on this one lingering fog and import images plain as we did before you'll see that yeah the smoke is there and that's really really cool but even if we bring the specular down and have a look the alpha is plugged into the alpha but we're still seeing this uh, black block behind it that's because that's how the video file is rendered it's not a quick time file it hasn't got an alpha transparency so what we want to do is basically simulate that by using a converter color ramp and it's important here to plug the color into the color ramp not the alpha plug the color in and then the color from the color ramp into the alpha and what we're going to basically do is use this to tell the shader that the black parts of the image are going to be the alpha channel and the white parts are going to be what we see now luckily for this image where it is just a black and white image that works really well for other things maybe explosions with darker plumes of smoke this might not work well but for these sort of fog type images this definitely works well and just play around with that until you get something you're happy with and that's it really that's that's how you that's a quick and easy tip again it's not a, a way of getting around simulating fire it is a really quick and easy way to add these sorts of effects into your scene uh, so you can kind of see how they look straight away you can have elements interact with them you don't have to worry about compositing afterwards as well and tracking stuff and whatever you'll see if we look at the scene from the dark following two that is currently a work in progress so <laughs> please don't judge it too harshly yeah that's not done um you see i've got these elements that same lingering fog i've just added in rotated it around in a few ways and all of the shadows work as well with it 
if you press play you can just see it all adds to this area of atmosphere within the scene without having to worry about simulating volumetrics, uh, VDB files, simulating particles, none of that. Like I say, you just have to be aware of the size of the video file. If it's a 10 gig file, then it's going to slow down your scene. If you can compress stuff, that would be really, really great. And that's it. Just a quick, simple tip for how to add in fire and smoke simulations to your Blender project. As, as I say, a little cheat code, but hopefully if you've got some of these files or if you haven't go to the websites I mentioned, I'll put some more in the description below and sort of save yourself some time. It's worth it for sure. I've been Toby. Thanks so much for watching this video. If it was helpful or taught you something new, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future.